News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. And a very good evening to you and a warm welcome to Newsline Live. My dear, my dear, my goodness me. Juggling resources has obviously failed to reset Sri Lanka's economy. There are therefore growing calls to have elections so that the people can give the people that they trust a fresh and a new mandate. And that is the theme today. Juggling resources fails to reset the economy. My guest today is attorney at law, all the way from Morito, of course, is Ms. Lini Fernando. Very good evening to you. Good evening, Faraz. Thank uh, you for you, having me. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thanks for being here. Are you, uh, are you related to Tiron, anyway, Fernando? No, not really. No, but, it's, uh, just a, it's just a common sort of name from, from, uh, Fernando. from Mora Morito. Morito. Yeah. But one of the veteran politicians that was there actually who did a lot to the people. Indeed. And yes, and his foundation continues to do a lot to the people even to this date. Mm. Oxford yeah. man. Yeah. Yes, mm. educated, uh, mm. very statesman and, you know, a politician that could be mm. respected, which touched touch the bottom level as well as the top tier. Indeed. Uh, do, you, do you think there are uh, many such inspi inspirators uh, in Parliament today? Very questionable because today we lack, I would say, politicians with integrity. Mm. What they say and what they do is completely different. Mm. What they say, the election mandates to come come when they are in office, what they deliver, blatantly lying, uh, not having, uh, and there's no accountability, transparency. I mean, people's feelings, people's franchise, even mm. though they're elected there, they, even though they're people's representatives, mm. how much they uh, care for the mandate of the people is questionable. So they are easy. Big there's, a, there's a lacuna there. Very much on leadership and the types of people we call leaders today. So now clearly juggling resources has failed to reset the economy and there are growing calls for elections. And clearly, uh, Lini, the uh, president has failed in his attempts uh, to have a f national government. He's called for that, but yeah. for various reasons the others are unwilling. Uh, to to sort of join hands uh, and and therefore um, clearly uh, many people that I've spoken to quite ordinary people out there who say look we need elections now because they feel that the legitimacy of the people in Parliament has eroded sure. completely see when this president came to power and we all know that he is one person with one seat in Parliament he had the choice of becoming a non-partisan leader, mm. whereas now he was elected by the 134. Today I would say that he is a stooge of the 134. Whether he's actually, when he came, uh, what did he say? I'm a friend of the people. I'm not a friend of the Rajpaksas. But today do we see him as acting, being a friend of the people? He called for national government. Mm. But then he went and appointed people to the cabinet who were the same faces back then. Mm. So what he says versus what he does is completely different. And the fact is, even even if he wants to form a national government, he must build that confidence. The narrative that he plays to the politicians should be something that is trustworthy. But if you really look at it, <coughs> the gassets that he's issuing, even this high security zone gasset which he's come up with, mm. and the way he's handling the protesters, not understanding why people came to the road, use of Pre Prevention of Terrorism Act. So but the he, things ha he has a uh, well honed answer. He says that. Uh, it is not him, it's the police who are uh, arresting people who have broken that's, the law. That's just a story, no? I mean, he at the end of the day, he's the executive, 20th Amendment, two-thirds majority, he calls the shots, which, which is a known factor, which was, which was the known factor. He, but if he, if he tells, says to the IGP, don't uh, charge these people, let it go, uh, won't he be accused of being sort of interfering? See, it's like this. It's the. It's not about him directly interfering or anything of that sort. It's a tone that they are setting. Now, if you really look at how yeah. the things have been unfolding, I mean, yeah. people are talking about the Prevention of Terrorism Act, the use of it. Who who decides the use of the Prevention of Terrorism Act? I mean, mm. there's penal code here. You can use the provisions of the penal code, mm. but to arbitrarily arrest people and hold them for longer periods, that is question number one. Mm. Then this whole t high security zone gasset which they brought in, which is completely ultra virus which is beyond the scope 
scope of the original act and mm. i mean my question is president himself being a lawyer a, demo, a democratic person i would say he was he was considered the epitome of democracy yeah. today the laws that he is bringing in uh, curbs people's uh, freedom of expression freedom of movement uh, freedom of dissent can we blame it on his association with uh, the 134 of course because i if today we feel that he's he's a uh, he's doing uh, carrying forward the agenda of the 134 and he fe he's obligatory to the 134 because 134 wants to make sure that they are in, they, that they political futures are protected and that come a next election that there's time for them to build up their loss credibility but that's, um, that's uh, what is the, happening but that's to the cost of the people of who have now grown fed up obviously they've um, uh, they've waited for a national government there is no national government so isn't it time really to have election yeah see it's like this now if you take the whole national government concept when he came in he openly said that we need a national government and I personally think yeah. for this economic crisis the best thing we can have right now is a national government consensus based mm. decision making mm. because we know right across Sri Lanka right across many institutions there is corruption then there is uh, mismanagement excess staff who hard decisions have to be made to put the country on the right track mm. so to do all that you need political consensus and that can only be achieved if the leader who is sitting on the top drives that narrative if he builds confidence if he builds trust among his uh, among the 225 in parliament mm. has he done that people will join hands but he is not doing that he look he is uh, i don't know whether it's him or whether there is somebody else outside who is controlling him yeah. uh, i mean he's he, we are people are confused and that is why uh, people who came daragale the people who came uh, down the protesters to they say whose agenda is he actually carrying forward and mm. and one of the saddest factors for us is that these leaders do not mm. understand the sentiments of the youth today why did the youth come to the road why did the people come to the road because people were oppressed their basic right of life right to life was curbed and then the decisions that were supposed to be made by the people who are in power did not do the right thing by the people mm. leading from corruption to mismanagement so people were actually fed up and 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 uh, and, uh, and a sort of uh, uh, <coughs> a related matter and thank you for your questions uh, you can send it by sms or whatsapp to 0772 uh, it should come up on your screen soon uh, 0 and somebody is saying here how did the state minister's son uh, and friends get bailed out so fast when the Aragale children are just being held up for so long using a vehicle from his father's ministry too exactly see this is the this is the fundamental problem is in this country law the law the 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 enforcement of the law one law to one one particular segment of the community mm. another law it's and called selective selectively law. and then i mean no no offense you look at the people who actually destroyed public property with inside that parliament mm. I mean, to date, even to this date, nothing happens to them. And then people at the, uh, the Aragalia. But don't you uh, find it ironic that those very people are today making uh, a voting and, um, making and so on, making decisions? They're, so they're lawmakers. No, they're not lawbreakers. Lawbreakers. So it's, it's, again, we don't have that culture in this country for us where, you know, what is wrong is wrong. And uh, you, nobody's above the law. Everybody thinks that they're above the law. When you have position power, you try to abuse the law. You, uh, and also, it's not just the parliamentarians, it's also the people who are enforcing the law. You take the public mm. uh, government officials, the police, and, and even and anybody should be able to say to the, the politician, look, my, uh, uh, I mean, even the government officials, they should say that their responsibility is towards the taxpayer and then ensure that the law is followed. But I mean, today you see in America, uh, the Attorney General <coughs> goes and files a case against the former president, mm. uh, for uh, Miss Donald Trump. So mm. will, will a situation like that ever happen in Sri Lanka? We can live in hope. <laughs> so, so this is what I'm saying. I mean, we had presidents who violated the constitution. There was a constitutional coup in this country. Then there was uh, corruption, mismanagement, cases. I mean, we can go on with the list yes. of cases. Now, but, but, but uh, talking about corruption uh, and the fact that Sri Lanka is in this unprecedented economic crisis, uh, of course, uh, underscoring all that, underlining it in thick black ink, is the fact that the United Nations resolution is now also talking about um, 
crime. economic crimes. Right. Yes. Now that is absolutely amazing because obviously it has reached such a level that even the international community have set up and looked at it and saying, well, here we go. And that's why this accumulation of corruption uh, has sort of come home to roost finally. And today Sri Lanka is in that. Therefore, would you welcome, uh, Lini Fernando, a move, any move, towards reaching a consensus and implementing pass Parliament passing an act uh, on the lines of Singapore's uh, uh, Political Donations Act or electoral funding or political yeah. funding, whatever yes. you want to call it. Most certainly, I think the c fact of corruption needs to be addressed. I think it, it's of pr uh, paramount importance in this country and not mm. just that uh, leaders at every level must understand the level of corruption that this country has gone to and not just at the top but at every level, mm. be it from the Pradesh Sabha to the Provincial Council, at ev any level. The base in this country mm. is corruption. Mm. So unless and until we handle, uh, resolve this, uh, there, are, there are several ways that you can do. You, ca you, you can bring in laws, not just having laws but in enforcing the laws. Mm. Law enforcement is what is lacking in this country. Now see we have the bribery act. We have so many acts. We have the penal code, there's a financial reporting act, then mm. uh, declarations of assets, uh, offenses against public property, election laws, everything is there. But when it comes to enforcement is a question. So the enforcement factor needs to be addressed and you know that the transparency in enforcement that politicians at no level can get involved if having a public prosecutor. So making this uh, making this uh, mechanism and also making it transparent mm. be it the politician, be it the citizen, be it the government servant at every level and, in, and people must whistle blow, people must call out you know so and so uh, took bribes from me. The, uh, the issue for us here there's so much of uh, bureaucracy there's so much of well, red tape. You're absolutely right, uh, Lenin. Let, let me interject and say to you, did you read uh, a few days ago, there was this sort of uh, a diktat that uh, the public officials cannot uh, make, uh, make uh, comments uh, on comments social media. On social media. I lost a guest. I, I'm now, my, Sharon Ranatunga, my producer, is rather put out because we, we've been prepping for this guest and so on. And now this guest can't turn up because he's frightened that he's going to lose his job. Yes. As a lawyer, do you find anything wrong in this? See. Is this a, a sort of uh, tying off your hands? Is this a... Uh, anti the constitution? See, again, this is also, I would say, one mechanism of the particular president of silencing individuals. See, uh, from the constitution, there are inherent rights, our fundamental rights are inherent rights. The freedom of expression is an inherent right. Mm. So, I am entitled to my opinion to express it, whether be it right or wrong, in whichever yeah. media that I stand. Yeah. So, I mean, you can have, if you are a government official, you can have certain code of conduct which is, uh, which is in line in how, I mean, I'm sure in the private sector, there are there is certain code of conduct that one must adhere to but then that should not cross your freedom of expression and your freedom of movement and freedom of thinking so that is what the government is trying to bring in these laws and try to say look be careful if you say if, if a certain word of yours slips out we will make sure that you know you are tried uh, tried in court so this is what it's again it's repression again uh, it's oppression it's again controlling the people so what the president i would say is trying to do is he's trying to bring in this whole fear cycle so that you know people will not voice out because mm. he himself knows the is economic issues in this country are far bigger and how can i resolve it the only way to resolve it is by silencing the people hence all these high security zones to peer prevention of terrorism acts to everything mm. whereas versus he can follow a different route he can try to build confidence among the public he can try to build that trust among the public he can engage in dialogue with the youth of this country i mean if he ever saw the sentiments of the youth why they uh, came to this uh, why they had this whole aragale and the gota gogama and if you just walked out in that area and if you saw the sentiments of the youth what they want is a rightful country they are fighting for their dreams they're they're fighting for their right to life and they, they want to live in a better country. Mm. Is that a wrong thing for us? That's not a wrong thing. No. We as citizens, is, that is what they, they are fighting for. So it is a duty of your elected officials to ensure that, that that is provided. But they fail and they say, look, we want to hold on to power at any cost. Mm. So you be silent. Let me do my part and let me, let me rule. I don't care what you think. 
and then the saddest part for us is that this is going to explode at some point mm. and then the catas catastrophe and you know the uh, what it will lead to will be quite dreadful to think so who is drawing the youth to that again the leader mm. so to cover the leaders inefficiencies let me control you whereas versus going the other way is our president trying to safeguard the crimes committed I'll change that the alleged crimes committed by the Raja Paksas or is he the president trying to hide behind presidential immunity regarding his involvement in various allegations we'll tell you the answer or Lini will try and answer those questions after this short break see you on the other side News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. News First Headlines Main Sponsor Anka Ege Arakshita Iti Gini Petti Surya Gini Petti This is how we overcome the crisis. President speaks in the Philippines. Will the IMF bailout be delayed? Who needs to be rehabilitated? Opposition against Nipuna in the south. A croc wreaks havoc in Mathura. News first. Headlines. Main sponsor. Anka Ege Arakshita Iti Ginipetti. Surya Ginipetti. Lovatama Eliya Denna Dilena Surya. Amataka Vinne Manati Namaki Surya. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. Welcome back to Newsline Live. I'm in conversation with Ms. Lini Fernando, attorney at law, uh, representing the SJB, I suppose. Uh, isn't that right, SJB? Exactly. Now then, would you, another uh, thing, thank you ever so much for your questions. Uh, it, this is, after all, your program. Newsline is yours. Um, would you welcome a national procurement system with a sort of commonality across the whole spectrum of state purchasing very much for us i think there are certain factors in this country should be non-negotiable mm. i think an open procurement system is one mm. declaration of assets campaign financing regulations mm. data based on politically exposed persons mm. beneficial ownership registers i would say asset declaration national procurement system law enforcement authorities their power then a political donation laws all of that i think there are certain factors in this country should be non-negotiable which should be implemented it should be carved in stone in exactly the Constitution. entrenched it, it can't be entrenched provisions but you know it, it should be you know like uh, there are certain values I mean, in t uh, certain values that one will one will adhere to, or you know, which, uh, which will about, govern. So, know, same way for a parliamentarian, you, these things are non-negotiable. Now, for example, parliamentary tradition means that you appoint Cope and uh, Copa and so on soon after the throne speech, and but that's not been done. Yeah. But how about a move also uh, to monitor uh, the hundred, the top one hundred projects in the country at any mm. given time? And because that way, uh, lots of uh, transparency can be achieved. Yeah, very much so. Not just for the top 100 projects and how the money comes in through these projects, how the money, how the payments should be made through what ba bank accounts, what procedures, how the money should be brought into the country uh, versus. Yes. I was going to ask you, would you also then say that it's absolutely essential that the local agent of foreign companies, for example, uh, be declared at the point of making their bid at the time of awarding and declare the percentage that they are being paid and an insistence that those monies 
be paid, paid in Sri Lanka into bank accounts of that agent. Very much well. See what happens here is who one party comes and negotiates. You enter into a contract with another party and in that sometimes the money is not brought into the country. The money is channeled through either you know a Singaporean entity or a BVI entity or a Cayman Island entity. Mm. So you know the, the, the structure is, is such that you know uh, not everything happens in a transparent manner and uh, one of the thing is I mean we know there's corruption at all levels even even how the ministers are involved and everything mm. so I mean there are shell companies that are created and how the money is rooted and that's how corruption at certain levels are not traceable and that's why you know Pandora papers today seems very fascinating but if you go and actually investigate can you get this money back who are the actual owners who are the beneficial owners can one track is questionable so again if the law is in place say if, if if you're bidding for a government tender your entity has to be a registered entity this is how your money should have should be this is how you should pay whether you have if you have to pay through dollars either you have to open iia accounts make sure you bring in the money in a legitimate manner and that it is transferred so that that whole channel needs to be drawn up this whole transparency, transparency and then you need to have authorities officials the inland revenue officials bringing in all these uh, regulations the reporting and everything being transparent governor namdalal veera singh is going to be a very busy man in top of all this if this is also put in there but it's absolutely essential isn't of it? course because the thing is for us again for all these things to happen it, it may the top must drive it the what the top believes in if the top believes in a corrupt free country uh, the top must set the tone mm. i mean what happened what we saw is mahindra rajpaksa when he was at the top his agenda was to make sure that everybody who supported him was well taken care of mm. there was nepotism there was cronyism and then we know who funded their campaigns, who benefited, and then massive tax cuts were brought in 2019, who benefited sugar scams to uh, mm. garlic scams to all sorts of scams. So, you know, people who fund you, you bring in regulation to make sure that, you know, the money is rooted back. So, this is a network for us, mm. a network that has been built by the politician, the businessman, their allies, everybody together. So. Uh, Either you break yeah. this system or you bring in regulations and you make everybody follow. If not, we are not getting in, going anywhere. Newsline appears to be very interactive. Uh, one of our viewers is pointing out that there is uh, the tender process does uh, include provision for the agent to be registered with the Registrar of Companies in Sri Lanka. But what we have been trying to say and we mm -hmm. make it clear now is that there needs to be a requirement as to, to declare the agency fee and the bank account to which that money will get transferred. Yeah, to. So because that way it's white money, no room for to be paying bribes. So it's it's like this, I mean when you are when you declare the entity, it has to be a registered company, you give your form ones and the form twenties articles yeah. of association, all that is given. But when payments happen, it happens. Sometimes you have the main contract, you have subcontracts for payments purposes, you have a different way. Mm. The money is being paid through the uh, through different channels. I mean there was a clear example. I think the coal one of the coal tenders, we mm. saw how the money came through a different uh, entity and mm. how it was uh, shuffled and mixed up. So mm. this this uh, chaos uh, or this confusion that is created is done by purpose. Mm. To ensure that the money, the tra the money trails are not traced for mm. us. So I think this is an e ingrained system that needs to be relooked at and defined with the objective of bringing transparency to the system. So if there is a national procurement uh, system, national procurement company as a, in a commission, well, all the, of the that actually is the, the, there is uh, all of these is mentioned in national procurement guidelines, but somewhere along the way. I think it was during the Rajapaksa uh, the first, uh, Rajapaksa the first, mind, uh, during his uh, term uh, or his two terms that there was a move to almost, almost uh, do away with, with. Uh, these national procurement guidelines and they started um, sort of accepting unsolicited bids for various reasons, reasons. And uh, but it's now grown out of hand. Yeah, and also auditing process, if you remember with the 20th Amendment, they brought in regulations where the President's office, the Prime Minister's office, none of these need, need not be audited. Mm. So, I mean, even today, if you take the Auditor General's role, role today, whether he's, uh, how, to what extent he, he has the authority to take action, those are questionable. So, again, I think, you know, it's time that these parliamentarians also realize that they
they have failed, failed by the people. And sincerely they realize that they need to fix it. It's not about preaching something when you're not in power and when you're going, when you get into power, you know, you again work out the system to make sure that you are benefited by the system. Right throughout what has happened is everybody has benefited through the government system versus mm. the public. Today, mm. the public is a pauper, the politician is at a completely different level. So, mm. I mean, today, if you and I are suffering because of high inflation or be our basic right to life is being taken, uh, taken off, if you trace back, it is again, it all leads to the manner in which this country was governed right throughout. So, the politician is responsible together with the government servant as well. Whilst uh, all this business is going on, you know, complaining that RW isn't doing this and doing that, uh, everyone seems to have forgotten, and thank you again for this question as well, everyone seems to have forgotten Gota Birajapaksa, who has brought this country down to its knees. He didn't finish when he left. He left something behind. Uh, <laughs> He left uh, something behind in the form of RW. If he had truly cared, he would not have thought of protecting himself or his family and brought someone who would have been approved by the people. Right. Is that about right? Has our viewer captured the sentiment? Yeah, you can say Gotabe Rajapaksa. I think he, it's even pointless talking about it. I think he's like a very much a failed leader, a down, downright failed leader. Mm. So when he was, I mean, he he caused his own destruction yeah. in terms of you know bringing in wrong regulations to you know not uh, not listening to professionals' advice. Uh, again, I mean, when you run for it, are you suitable? Do you have the knowledge to knowledge to govern a country? Is what one should question. I mean, he came. He was never a representative. He was never a parliamentarian. Never, mm. a, never a public. Uh, he was a public servant, but never was he uh, at at a municipal council or a local council. So his experience of governing was always questionable. So I mean, if you take the fine uh, fertilizer decision which he, he took, yeah. then then leading into tax cuts, to understanding the law of this country, to everything, it all leads to showing his. Uh, incompetency, inefficiency, and lack of understanding. Mm. So, I mean, uh, so people throwing him out of uh, power mm. is reasonable because, I mean, he failed by the people. So, afterwards, uh, Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe taking on that position. Uh, my question is he can play a different role, but he is not playing that role. He can be that non partisan uh, president in this country who will do the right thing by the people he is he knows the law he's a lawyer he's a he is an experienced politician probably the most experienced and experienced politician in the country mm. he can fix this but his intentions are not that he's not building confidence but he's trying to control he's using the PTA he's bringing in re these regulations high security zone regulations and he's trying to control everything which is the wrong way to go so, I mean, even if people want to support him, again, you go back and question. I mean, as, as uh, Samagi Janabala Vegya has taken on uh, on the Public Finance Committee, mm. uh, Harsha De Silva is de de definitely trying to assist. But then again, they also end up questioning when president makes regulations of this nature. Because mm. at the end of the day for us, democracy in this country was something which we all enjoyed and democracy we are epitome of democracy so you know you can't do anything by by holding on the rights of the people our mm. freedom of expression and everything even if you want to develop the country you must bring the right narrative by controlling by using force is not the way to go that is not the right way of governance. I mm. mean, be empathetic towards the people. We have issues in this country. There's malnutrition. People cannot eat. The high food escalation prices to inflation, to education. To, I mean, the daily struggle of the people. Leaders are not understanding that. M I Which mean, is why we go back to our theme that uh, juggling resources has failed to reset the economy and there are growing calls causes. for elections. Very much. If this particular president, he has no other choice because this, this, this. Do you think he'll he'll suddenly discover uh, his greatness and his strength uh, only after at the end of February uh, next year, See, you when he when the right to dissolve parliament is accrues to the president? See, at the end of the day, for for us, there is no this. Though there is this particular parliament is legitimate, there is no legitimacy. They don't represent the sentiments of the people. A bunch of people who are there 
are failed. They, they have failed in the eyes of the people. Mm. So it is it is time to call for a fresh mandate. But then fresh mandate should not be in, in such a manner to ensure that the same rogues also come in. So prior to going into elections, there are immediate things that you need to do. Bring in these campaign financing regulations to ensure that the election happens in a transparent manner. At least have asset declarations. Mm. Make asset declarations public. Bring in campaign finance regulations and put a cap. Empower the election commissioner to you know cancel uh, 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 politicians the, the result. uh, 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 results uh, nominations cancel it I mean do away with welfare politics um, well, so, somebody just said this he, he president is waiting till the 31st of March uh, to dissolve Parliament we don't know that let's uh, let's hope that happens or, or not that's his decision but Lini Fernando, thank you very much for being on Newsline Thank Live. you for us. Pleasure talking to you all. And that's the way it was on Newsline Live. Thank you ever so much for all the questions. It's now time for the primetime news from that wonderful primetime news team. Take care and as always, God bless you all.